Welcome car audio enthusiasts. Today we're going to give you a quick overview of the Mustang and where we're at because it's been a while but Sam's been busy um, stealthily putting his Mustang together without me noticing which is pretty funny but let's go and check it out. I can't wait to show you. You need a drink. I do. What are you doing, man? You're fiberglassing your seat. Yeah, it's a little different. Once I've done this before. Now, I noticed that you've stealthily been working on your Mustang, which is good. I like the quiet achiever kind of approach in the background. But then the other day, I've seen the back seats come out. Obviously, I helped you with those. And I got an inkling of what's going on, but I didn't think I'd be seeing fiberglassing of the seat. Either did I, it was sort of just an epiphany that came up. I'm not sure if it's actually the best or worst idea I've ever had. All right, but I'm gonna find out. tell us what we're doing with this back seat. So, the idea behind this is essentially I've redesigned the entire car as you do when you can't decide what you want. Um, and essentially I wanna go infinite baffle across the rear and do a complete uh, seat delete. I was already looking at running a roll cage anyway, so I sort of figured they're impractical to begin with and then add a gauge into the mix. It's not actually going to do anything, so I might as well utilize that space. Um, originally, I was going to build a mold at MDF so it looked like a finished baffle for an IB setup and then take a mold of that, cast it out of glass or carbon, just mm. keep it lightweight so that I'm not completely weighing down the car. Um, I like the idea of an IB and I know we've discussed it, but I'd like to point out that you've now removed your back seat, which is close close to the uh, original old school idea, which was for earthquakes in a um, isobaric band pass, I think I said close in the back. Close to that, so if I'm gonna do it better with new school gear. Yeah, I agree. I, I like the idea of it. And, and the drivers, um, I already know what they are, but I'm asking for the benefit of everyone watching. Well, I haven't actually locked down completely. I've got a few ideas. Um, so one of the brands obviously that we sell here is Dyne. So I'm thinking about mm. running the E1200s. It's mm. sort of somewhat limited in high-end subs that are actually capable of doing IB properly. Um, the Brax can do it, but you're sort of limited in SPL output. I probably will test them, but we'll see how we go. Um, but it's mainly down to the E1200s uh, and run two of them, so one per side or the hybrid uh, Claris woofers. Oh, They're nice. not quite as high end, so mm. I'd prefer to go with the Dynes, mm. but it's just a matter of actually testing it. At the end of the day, it's just whatever's gonna work best acoustically. The, um, the Claris woofers are actually designed for IB, which is kind of cool, so. How are you going to mount these? So I'm, you're obviously taking a mold, yep. and obviously two Dynes, for example, we'll, we'll assume it's gonna be Dyne, two Dynes in the back at an IB setup. So first of all, why don't we talk about IB, just to give people an overview of what an infinite baffle so, setup is. IB is essentially infinite baffle, so there is no enclosure. In a car environment, you can do a true IB, which is venting to atmosphere, so you can literally cut out the floor. Mm -hmm. It's actually quite common, believe it or not, in the States and over in Europe. Probably not gonna to go to that level, because I actually drive my car mm -hmm. all the time, and me sitting in traffic with music blaring, I don't need everybody in the traffic to enjoy that experience with me. <laughs> I like to be a little bit more discreet. <laughs> um, so in my scenario, it's going to be essentially using the entire boot or patch as you like to call it as the enclosure. So there are parameters around that. You do need to be careful because when you're going infinite baffle, if the boot size is too small, That's right. it is actually going to act as an enclosure. It's effectively a box. It, it is yep. effectively a box. So I can't remember what the technical parameters are. It might be 10 times VAS from memory it, that you can naturally now class that as infinite mm. baffle. Luckily, mine is uh, within this threshold, so it will act as a true IB, um, but that's essentially the idea. It's allowing the woofer to not be restricted by a box, so the, the loads are a little bit more natural, a little bit more extension. You do have the cost of output slightly, I was say, yeah. um, but with also the benefit of efficiency. What's our mechanical excursion on the dynes? Do you know? I can't remember off the top of my head. It's somewhere in the 60 millimeter range, peak to peak. So they have a bit of a bit 60 of trouble. mil. That's still great. I remember old school, old school woofers. You had like 10 mil, maybe yeah. 8 mil in some of them. So that's a fantastic setup. So how is this going to look in the seat? So 
The idea for the entire build is essentially OEM Plus with a twist, I guess you'd say. Um, it's meant to look like it's blending in with the vehicle and not overtake the vehicle, which is difficult when you have so much gear going into a car. So uh, we're looking at replacing the front seats, but to a genuine Recaro, and then the rear seat, well, rear substage setup will essentially look like a normal factory seat. So it'll all be retrimmed in Alcantara and Apple leather. Um, and nice. all the gear will actually be sort of hidden away, so to speak. So the center section of the seats will be cut out um, and they'll have a perforated mesh that's molded to the same shape and you'll yep. see the sub cone behind that backlit. Nice. Um, and then in the lower section where the original seat was, you'll see the new Helix C-Series amps again. Is that mesh. the C4? Yeah, the new C4s, yeah. So I'm actually going to use them for all of the front stage and at this stage also the sub stage as well. Um, there's a few benefits to that. It means your phase response is the same from your tweet all the way through the sub. It also means everything's class AB and has the same sonic signatures as well. You can get decent results mixing and matching amps, but sure. it is really nice to have the same all the way through because every amp sounds different. That's made in Germany. That's it. Win. Win. I like it. <laughs> all right, I know you're under the pump to get this done. Um, smells fantastic. I'll let you get back to putting your mask on. Yeah. Um, maybe when you got five, I'm going to go and work on the Jeep because I'm so far behind on that. But when you get five, maybe we go and uh, look at these eight pillars that you've yep. made. No worries. They are awesome. Tell me what's going on. A lot. So pretty much everything's been stripped out. Nice. Yeah, a lot to do. A lot of wiring everywhere at the moment. That's all got to be stripped out. It's part of the previous install, so. Okay, so I want to have a look at these secret little eight pillars that you've knocked out with the Brax <laughs> mids yeah, and tweets come in have a look. Fantastic, we'll have a look. Okay, eight pillars. Mm, all done, for the most part. Hey, you've got the second one in as well. Mm. Yeah, I got that in last night. So I'm pretty happy with it. I did not notice that. Hmm. The Mustang dash is a really squared off high dash that hmm. particularly challenging, I think, if you're putting speakers in A pillars. There's worse out there. Sure. <laughs> but it is a pain. Um, it's more of an issue with a lot of coupes for some reason with the rake of the windscreen and how they design the A pillars. The actual plastic trim itself is extremely contoured and almost does a U-turn on itself, so it sort of gets quite interesting. I had to decide if I, you know, to go on or off axis and ended up just going with the off axis. They have a good response, um, so that it will still work. Ideally, I do like going on axis, but it was just going to be a massive pillar. It was still actually being a driving car, um, and I'm pretty out of it, but it still needs to actually be a driving car. Mm. What's <laughs> happening with mid-base? Uh, <laughs> Mid-base, so they're going to be changed out to uh, the matching Brax mids to obviously complement the, um, the tweet and mid-range as well. We were thinking about doing door builds, but it just yeah. depends on how sort of time yeah. permits, I guess. Um, I would like to do it, and if we did do it, I could probably go dual mid-base, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so at the moment, it's going to be running a full active front stage, um, which is a little bit out of the norm. There's a few reasons behind it. Experimentation is one of them. Um, the other reasons are, it's, especially since it's a shop car, it's nice to be able to demo different setups. And with it running all active, I can you know, demonstrate to somebody what it sounds like in a two-way, a three-way with a dome, or a three-way with a cone, just by clicking the button and change the tune. So there's, there's a lot of benefits to that. But yeah, if I do do a door build, it'll probably end up dual mid-base because of C-Series. I think they do 210 or 220 RMS a channel at 2 ohms, so I definitely have the power to support it. Um, but yeah, it's just if we have time. You know how they're going to look when it's done, don't you? They're going to be massive. Yeah, they're not going to be small. No. Um, the funny thing is, you can fit almost any driver in this thing from factory. Like, you've got a ridiculous amount of room. You can literally fit an 8-inch sub in there. Like, there's no depth limitation almost. It's, yeah, there's a serious amount of depth, but as soon as you want to build a sealed pod, it's a different story. I'd probably end up using the whole lower section of the door and remoulding it. Since the rest of the interior is getting retrimmed anyway, I just completely customise the door trim and get the whole thing rewrapped. Um, it'd probably, really, I think it's the only way to integrate it properly. I think if I did a separate pod, it'd really stand out. 
so it just makes sense that I'll probably completely reach from it. Um, well, I know you've got a busy day, so have I, so I guess we'd better get, get back to it. work. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Well, guys, that was very interesting. These A pillars look outstanding. Uh, Sam and Jay are just cracking on with the work at the moment. I thought I'd just come and talk about the Mustang. I really like the idea of IB. I really like the idea of deleting the back seat. I didn't think Sam would do it, but he has. And talking about his design and the way the back seats are gonna look, it will kind of look like the speakers are molded into actual back seats. The way he was talking about trimming with leather to match the front. It's gonna be fantastic. I think there's a lot of hours in it and yeah, he's really getting into it. It's really looking good. I'm quite surprised that there's no back seat in this Mustang and he's fiberglassing over it. Crazy stuff. The Alcantara leather in the car looks fantastic. I think this is gonna be an awesome setup. It's a beautiful car to do it in. Um, Sam was talking about a roll cage. Uh, again, first I've heard of it, which is pretty awesome. Um, but considering he's done a lot of work to the car, I think the whole package should look really fantastic. So thank you for joining us on the journey and stay tuned guys. Don't forget, subscribe to the YouTube channel, our Instagram, Facebook. Thanks for watching, stay tuned.